Apple officially announced the iOS 26 and we actually have access to it already. I used it for about 36 hours and this would be the video where I explain all of the features and my experience about that. Make sure to leave a comment about what you think about those features as well. And let's get started. Right off the back, we're gonna talk about the liquid glass. The look is amazing. You can't actually tell the experience how you feel about it until you have it tested on your phone. And for that specific reason, check this out. If you swipe down from the top right corner, you can notice the glass reflecting all the background just like that. And this does give you the experience what you expect from Apple. So for this particular feature, 10 out of 10. If you didn't know, there are a lot of animations that are added onto this experience as well. So if you were to swipe down and then swipe back up, you would notice how these applications are gonna show up. But if you do this swipe up action more forcefully, you would notice these applications show up with much stronger animation as well which is really cool. Next feature is the customized and more personalized messages in general. Now, these are the features that we already know that are existing in the current market in different applications. But Apple, as always, has brought it into their system in the most perfect way that they can. My experience is that it's gonna add to the experience of having those group chats within the iMessages by letting you add any pools about any topic that you have going on, changing background images in those chat messages as well. So overall, this feature is just adding to the previous experience of the iMessages. Something that was missing before, but nobody noticed it until they added it, basically. But since it's in the market already, with my experience, this feature would be around 7 out of 10. Next feature is the live translation in those iMessages. Again, it takes the experience of iMessages to the whole new level. This was a feature that was missing, but nobody noticed it until it actually appeared. This experience has been in the market already. In all of the social media platforms, when you see any comments, you can tap and hold on to it and be able to translate that live just like that. But in iMessages now, you can do that live by default. How cool is that? So that is the reason the way they have added it to the iMessage experience. This feature would be easily 9 out of 10. Next feature is the screening tool in the iPhone. We all know Apple intelligence was not working as they expected in the beginning, but now with a few months of delays, they have improved it so much that now users can easily use it into their daily lives. And that's where screening tool comes in. Basically, it's going to communicate with unknown numbers on your behalf. So you basically have an AI agent built into your smartphone smartphone, which is going to communicate with that unknown number. And until they give their information to that AI agent, you won't even be bothered about this call or message at all. The way they have integrated this high in demand AI agents into iPhone just casually like that, 10 out of 10 for this feature, definitely. Apple CarPlay, as is, was really good experience. They've added the same transparent UI to their CarPlay. It looks great. Also, the experience in general is really good with this Apple intelligence. They're gonna divide your car display into different screens where you can see the widgets and tap and respond to those live feedback that you're gonna get on each one of them. So not only you can keep track of the main feature that you're using, be it maps or calls or whatever, but you can also see those live notifications appearing on CarPlay as well. And it's basically just a little bit of improvement on CarPlay experience. So I would still give it nine out of 10. A lot of people are actually questioning the way this transparent menu looks. And if you're one of those people, this is how you can improve the actual experience as well. For that, you would simply go into your accessibility menu, then tap on display and text size. And here you can simply reduce transparency just by tapping this button right here. And now when you swipe down, this is much more cleaner. Look, this reduces the transparency of that menu as well. Again. The type of audience that Apple has, you would expect some of them to not like that feature and having that solution built into the accessibility menu, it simply shows that Apple does care about their users as well. This feature, 10 out of 10, definitely. This is how the light and dark background actually look when you're testing it in the new iOS 26. Apart from these two looks, they actually have transparent look as well, where they're changing how the applications look and they are making them with more of white and gray color design. This is one of the main features, so definitely giving it 10 out of 10. Lock screen now has a few features that I really enjoy. First is a dynamically adaptable time font, which basically extends and kind of overlaps onto the pictures. It looks really cool as well. And the 3D look of any photo that you have as wallpaper. The experience is not that great through the camera lens, but the way I am experiencing it is really good. 10 out of 10. Every Android user and their neighbor used to complain that Apple does not have many features that Android has built in. For example, if you take a screenshot, you can use their AI feature to be able to scan whatever is in the picture, look up online, 
just from that screenshot as well. Well, bad news for them. Now, Apple does have exact same feature built into their screenshot as well. So once you take a screenshot, you will be presented with the same features at the bottom right here. You can ask Apple intelligence any questions about this picture, do a search of what you see in the picture, just like you would in any other phone in the market. And for this feature, I'm gonna give it 10 out of 10, no questions asked. Okay, so this next feature, I have not touched it myself yet, just because it needs more time to do that. It involves Apple intelligence and shortcuts application to do a bunch of things like workflows and automation built into iPhone. And just for the sheer reason that Apple is using all of these technologies in this feature, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10, no questions asked. The reason why is that this is related to coders and Apple has the best coders and developers in the market. So if they're making something publicly available at that level, it has to be good. Next feature is the screening of unknown phone numbers in your messaging application and it would automatically categorize them in a hidden folder which is called unknown and I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. The reason for that is that in certain situations, you do want to have those unknown phone numbers come through as leads for businesses. So in those scenarios, you do need the unknown phone numbers coming through. But once you understand how Apple intelligence is just simply categorizing it in a different folder, you can simply keep track of it there as well. Next feature is definitely a 10 out of 10, just because it holds the call for you if you're calling a company and you're waiting on their customer service to come through and you can continue listening to your music or do any work that you want to and it will notify you as soon as it's your turn. A very cool feature. Next up is the Maps application. I would definitely give it nine and a half out of 10 just because there is a lot more improvement to go through if you were to compare it with the other competitors in the market. But given the trajectory of their features, I feel like Apple Maps application would soon become my default navigation application, which I'm currently using Google Maps for the longest time. Google Maps has way too many things going on in their application for Apple to catch up to it. For example, they have like local guides they can post pictures, add new businesses, and they also get analytics of how many times the photo was seen, and they give you levels of where you're at in your journey to a local guide as well. So there is a lot going on in that section. But Apple is clearly focusing on maps now, and it's in the same trajectory of making it the best application possible. Because with my testing, in certain situations, Apple Maps experience of the visuals is a lot better than Google. If you question that, then travel under a bridge using Apple Maps and Google Maps and notice the difference of visuals. I'm gonna leave it at that. They're also adding visited places in the maps as well, so you can keep track of where you've been, just like timeline in Google Maps. Apple is focused on new game application as well. You can keep track of friends' accomplishments in games. You can keep tab of the scoring and whoever is the first gets like a bigger profile picture in that dashboard, visually kind of giving you a kickback of your accomplishments basically and a lot more suggestions based off of the type of games that you're playing. The compatibility of iOS 26, 10 out of 10. They've gone all the way back to iPhone SE, the second version of it, and they will be able to access this new iOS 26, which is sick. That's about six years of update right there. This is my feedback. Leave a comment about which one is your favorite, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. So once you take a screenshot,